Shark attacks have always been a real worry, of course, for surfers, especially around the world. But uh, a university in Australia may just have found a solution by adding bright lights to surfboards. Dr Laura Ryan from Macquarie University in Sydney spent nearly 500 hours towing illuminated seal-shaped foam decoys around a bay in South Africa, a popular area for great whites. Now, she found that vertical stripes of light confuse the sharks enough to stop them thinking that the decoys were potential prey. So, does it work? Uh, let's talk to a marine scientist, an expert on sharks, Riley Elliott, also known as Shark Man. Um, Riley, what, just talk us through the principles of this idea and whether you think it might work. Yeah, good evening, Ben. Um, look, firstly, as you said, shark attacks are tragic, albeit rare. Um, but anything we can do to reduce that risk, like we do with avalanches or car crashes, is fantastic. Um, great whites, unfortunately, hunt by ambush in low light visibility, and um, they're looking for that silhouette of a seal. And unfortunately, a surfboard from below can often be mistaken for that. So. What these scientists are doing, and I commend them on it, is, is a difficult task, but uh, is they're trying to break up that silhouette or show the shark that it is not a natural seal silhouette by illuminating the bottom of it. Um, there's been a lot of attempts to do things like this, uh, you know, sea snake patterns, um, different kind of visual cues or colors, but a silhouette by definition is going to block out any of that because the light is being silhouetted. So what they're trying to do here is, you know, create light under that board or that seal decoy to show that shark, you know, that's going to mm. come up like a missile, uh, that this isn't its normal prey. And sharks are very cautious and calculated and will avoid something that isn't their natural prey. Because you, you, it's a bit counterintuitive, isn't it? Because you would think that putting lights on a surfboard would actually be attracting sharks' attention. Um, but it's kind of the opposite, really. Yeah, well, in nature, bioluminescence is used as an attractant and a deterrent. Um, the behaviour of sharks, especially a great white, as mentioned before, is, is they're like a mechanism. If A, B, C, D and E all add up, they'll do if, you know. Um, but if one of those things is not right, they are smart enough to avoid it. Um, now, this isn't foolproof. You know, these things take a lot of time and effort and therefore funding and support to do. And um, towing CLD, because I've done it in South Africa a lot, it is it's time consuming and you need large data sets for this stuff. But what should be commended is effort to reduce risk because, look, you were talking about Ukraine before, thousands of people being killed. You know, sharks kill 10 people tragically on a global scale when billions of us go in the sea. But the shark is the animal that's copped the most, you know, bad rep of anything. And um, <laughs> unfortunately, that's resulted in hundreds of millions a year getting killed. So anything we can do to reduce mm. human shark conflict is fantastic. I, I said at the beginning, you're known as Shark Man. Just tell us about your experiences with sharks. Yeah, well, like Laura, the scientist, I'm a surfer. This is my backyard right out here. This is where I swim with great whites, blue sharks, maker sharks. We tag them, track them, learn about their behaviours, all in an effort to conserve them against risks like fisheries, um, but also risks that they can pose to us when we overlap and swim in what is their ocean. Uh, and we tend to forget that. Um, so, you know, knowledge is power. And my big effort is to do the science lace it beautifully with imagery of storytelling and put it in the media and, and persons like yourself sharing it on a global mass because not everyone can see a shark, experience a shark, be exposed to a shark, but we all breathe the air, half of which comes from the ocean that sharks have been maintaining the health of for hundreds of millions of years. So this isn't something you should shy away from. These animals are incredibly important, but um, at the same time, we want to enjoy ourselves and go swimming and anything we can do to improve, you know, you know, or should I say reduce our risk of doing that is great. But perspective is key. You know, wearing a life jacket, learning how to swim, you know, that's the greatest danger is drowning. Sharks are definitely down the bottom of the list. <laughs> Good perspective. Um, thank you very much indeed. Shark man, Riley Elliott, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Cheers, Ben. <laughs>